All right, greetings and salutations, everybody. I wanted to kind of go over the differences between cold casting and regular casting. I rolled the sleeves for this one. And I want to, I'll start out with regular casting. By regular casting, I mean you can actually turn any material you want. I use wood to mill out uh, what I want to cast. And then I use stuff from smooth on to make the molds and the, one of the things I tried originally was regular casting using pewter because the melting point isn't that bad it's it's easy to use you can do it in your basement anywhere I've cast with aluminum I don't recommend it um, for first time use mainly because you kinda need to do that outside around a bunch of sand I've also only cast with the green sand method green sand method with aluminum if you want to kind of dip your feet in there uh, start out with pewter and one of the reasons I say that is because you can start right out with mold max 60 from smooth on don't worry it's not sponsored I wish and what that will give you is this nice red looking material here and what this can do for you is it's really easy to do a single sided coin or anything if you just all you do then is you actually make a mold box and if you go on the smooth on website they show you how to make the mold box I'm not going to show you that here and you'll notice there's a little white powder in there that's actually just talcum powder or baby powder and that's in there to help strengthen the life of the mold then what I do then once you do once then once you've made this you can actually just layer flat down use a heating equipment and a ladle Oh, mine's right here. I use actually just a little plug-in stovetop piece. And then I have a little ladle where I put some pewter ingots in there, heat it up, and then once it's warmed up, I take it, pour it into the mold, and then I have a little spoon, much like this one, and I actually just whack the mold until it sort of flows into place. Now, though that method works, and it's fun, and you get a nice heavy metal coin it's hard to do more than just one side and it doesn't look terrible but the first thing people ask is oh you couldn't have put something on the other side uh... But of course what do they care they didn't have to do any of the work you can do two-sided molds with with this with this material as well it gets a little more complex and i'll kind of show you that with these molds for the cold casting in a bit but i wanted to show you that what a pewter mold looks like. I didn't make this through Smooth On. This is actually from another company, a place where I buy the the pewter from. And if you see, it's got it's dual sided. They did like a vacuum type cast on the material. And this one is actually this one formed pretty good. But when you do this, you actually have to hold it together like I'm doing here. You'll notice one of these they're actually curing right now for the cold cast. This one didn't need it. This one did because I made it thick enough on both sides. They actually have a nice seal and I didn't have to have any pressure on the mold. This one was a little light on one side because I didn't measure it properly. So I just have the these. See, it's double-sided here. Ugh, let me lift it up. Okay. See, it's double-sided. I got a little piece of wafer holding it down and then these clamps are pushing on it. And that keeps it nice and, and steady. Uh, you have to do that with every one of these. And then when you pour it in, as you're doing that, you have to whack it and get the metal to sort of form and get everywhere in here. For me, I have about an 80% success rate. I don't know if you can hear that screeching, but that's my parrot that we just got. And it hears me talking and wants me to talk to her. So please forgive that. All right, so moving on. That's that. So single-sided, easy to do, a lot of fun. You only have to do the one cure time, pour it in. Um, you get a nice weight to it. It's it's a lot of fun that way. If you're feeling adventurous and you want to do double-sided stuff with pewter, give it a shot. Um, it's a little trickier to do the molding. So with that, we'll move on to cold casting. And what you pour, what makes cold casting cold casting is you actually, I just use smooth cast 325. It's part A and B. Uh, one to one ratio so easy to do I just use two little plastic shot glasses they're all frame you can't see them here they are I just use two little shot glasses 
and for these two particular molds I actually just fill it up to a little like base the brim right here and that's enough and with one of the parts all you do is scoop in a little powder I have aluminum also from smooth on I have aluminum brass and bronze so I'm making right now some aluminum some of the aluminum ones out of the aluminum powder so you can see details there you still get the wood grain finish uh, this is unpolished however it all it'll do is it'll keep the same color and it'll shine a little bit so comparatively with pewter silver looks more like silver that's why pewter was that's why pewter is pewter so I mean but the benefit with cold casting is you don't need a heat source all you do is dump a little bit of powder in with it when you mix your two parts pour it in the mold demold them pop them out so it's a little it's a the demold time for the 325 is about 10 minutes if it's 75 72 degrees in the room it is only 69 where I'm at so it usually takes about 15 minutes before I'm ready to demold it and even then they're a little flimsy they're a little, you gotta let them wait cure for a good like half day before you can actually manipulate them uh, by the way this is with the brass powder by the way you can see the light color difference and then this one I kinda polished but I don't think I used enough I didn't use enough powder on this cast uh, also if you're impatient you get things like this <laughs> that happen that is not supposed to be there it's supposed to look it's supposed to just be an umbrella <laughs> That was because I demolded it too quick. <laughs> oh well, it's not like it's that expensive to do. Uh, why I like cold casting is it's easier to do double sided. And these guys are ready to de be demolded. So I'll kind of show you guys live what that looks like. So these you can just peel across. Boom. Oh, beautiful. Beautiful. You'll notice I have these little holes here. And all these are are little acorn nuts, cap ends. So I actually just stick them in the mold. They actually recommend doing it that way on the Smooth On website. So then I just then you just sort of pull on the sides here. I'll tell you what the mold material is in a second. Let's just demold this. There we go. A decent casting. Not a lot of bubbles. The trick with this one is, you'll notice there's a little bit of voids in it. And I don't know if you'll notice it, like right there. So you can kind of notice a little bit of voids here and there. And for what I'm using it for, no, not really a big deal, in my opinion. But, I don't know. If, it, if that's something you're, you can keep trying again, you can also get a vacuum chamber, if you really want. How you make the mold is pretty simple. You start with one side. You do the same, and instead of gluing it down to a piece of board and putting everything around it, you actually stick it into clay. Now, because this was wood, what I do is I mill it out of wood. Um, this one is actually just uh, balsa wood. And then after I'm done, because it's soft, I stain it. And then that hardens it up enough where I can manipulate it. And just to be extra careful, I actually wrap a little bit of saran wrap on the side that I'm going to push into the clay. So I put a little saran wrap on it, push it into the clay, get it nice and tight so you'll kind of notice the wavy stuff right here. That's the saran wrap. And then how I make the pour point is I actually just put some clay and attach it to the top of the coin like that. And then reference it and move it over. And if you've ever made molds before, you'll wonder why I don't have any spots for risers. That's because this is a cold cast and if you once you've made the mold and you have both sides when you put it back together as you're pouring if you sort of squeeze it a little bit or rock the mold back and forth you'll actually get the air bubbles that get trapped to pop up to the top so I'm able to cast these pretty reliably um, where I get it to where it's acceptable to me and with very few bubbling and to tell you the truth that's fine I didn't really ever feel the need to do the vacuum casting with this. Now if I was if I was a little more picky, sure, I could go vacuum casting, but uh, it's it's been working out working out pretty good. You have to use 
mold release. Mold release 200 is what I use. So I do spray the wood material. So anytime I pour the rubber mold, which by the way, I'm sorry for not saying it, sir. For this particular mold, I used the Umu, Umu series. And the Umu series, I used Umu. Uh, what did I use? I used, ah, the 30. I used the 30 because the short hardness is a little, it's 30A instead of 25A. Got to wait longer for the cure, but that's fine. So the Umu 30 series that I used on these molds, and whenever you're going to pour that to cure it, to make a mold, you got to use mold release. After you've made the mold, if you're going to use the Smoothcast 325 or 320, you don't have to. Um, they say that this might increase the life of your mold if you do, but I don't know. I've used, I've cast hundreds with just the material, and that's usually all I need it for. And that's been working out great for me. To do, I've kind of given a bunch of recaps already, but just to do one at the end of the video, um, hot casting, I would recommend starting with pewter. You would want to use Mold Max 60 from Smooth On to make the mold. You would then need a hot plate or a hot surface, a little electric burner is my preferred method, with a ladle, a, a steel ladle. Melt the material, pour it in the mold, Wag it with a spoon, demold. Uh, the process is a little quicker, and you can walk away and come back and forth from it. Cold casting uh, requires smooth cast 320 or 325. It requires the Umu 25 or 30 series to make the mold. You would then mix your desired aluminum brass, bronze, whatever powder, any metal powder you want from Smooth On in with your Smooth Cast, 320, 325. Mix those together, pour them into your mold. Make sure you manipulate the mold a little bit, squeeze it to push out, squeeze it to push out the air bubbles, manipulate it while rock it around a little bit. Make sure all the air pockets are out. Then let it set for uh, 10 to 15 minutes. Do the demold, cut off your waste material that you would have otherwise had and uh, let it cure for a day or two and then distribute and then uh, if you can while it's still while it's still manipulatable remove as much flashing as you can because it gets harder after the material uh, completely cures uh, so it's easier to get it off earlier so I try and do that I get the base the, most of the material off then then I will take some sandpaper and sort of get the edges all cleaned off uh, tomorrow when I come back and look at these. The As an easiness scale, doing single-sided, it's about the same, but if you're doing single-sided and you want the weight, go with pewter. If you want the weight and you're going to do double-sided, pewter is a little harder to do the casting. And if you don't really care about the weight, just go with cold cast. Um, also, if you care about voids in the cast, it's easier to, I would recommend, oh, I don't know, you're just going to have to try and play with it, but I haven't tried it with a vacuum, I, I imagine it just, alright, I went on for way too long talking about this, I'm going to keep making some more, i got to make 25 of these um, before Sunday, so I better get going. Uh, until next time, I'm the Ill-Informed Human. Bye-bye!